friend of mine uh, used to be a federal narcotics investigator, actually undercover, just sent me a text message and said that he was giving firearms instruction to a 76-year-old over the weekend. Why not? 942, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX, NewsRadio1310.com. Do want to remind you, uh, or want to remind you, tomorrow morning Steve Millington is back. He was in San Diego last week visiting some grandchildren. I'm sure, he'll say the weather was better. Lucky guy. Uh, he's scheduled to join us between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, and then uh, Prosecutor Grant Loeb's is scheduled to join us. Uh, Grant Loeb's uh, will be with us for the most of the second hour of the program. Just a quick note to people. I have a lot of fixed guests on this program. The program is only two hours a day. When you subtract all of the commercials and the news and everything else that takes place, it's about 78 minutes, 77, 78 minutes, which means, and I'm not a human microphone stand. We have a lot of material to cover in two hours, and some days when I have guests on for the final 90 minutes of the program, it means I only have about 20 minutes to cover anything that was really the top story of the day. And I got an email from someone over the weekend who, you know, is not too happy I couldn't squeeze him in tomorrow, even though I offered some time today. And I keep, and I said at least three weeks ago that I wasn't going to be chasing politicians down with elections coming up, and that I wanted to to clear all of that early because I don't want people walking in here at the last minute because we may not have time. I posted it to our website, and now, of course, all the last minute people want to come in thinking, aha, I'll get in there last, drop a few bombs on my opponent, and uh, we'll take care of that. Not going to happen if I don't hear from you by the end of today. Not going to happen in advance of Election Day. I'll tell you that right now. We have too many other guests coming in, fixed guests on a regular basis. And frankly, i got to get to those people too. 54, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX, NewsRadio1310.com, 736-0300. We have a caller with us, and you're up next. You're on the air. Good morning, Bill. Friday you had that group on, the, I believe they were called the Three Percenters, and I know this is not the subject right now, but I had a question. Is there a way to get in contact with them? Well, I know they have a you know a website, and if you did like a quick computer search, just three percent Idaho, you'd likely come up with a site. Uh, I tried that. Yeah, I I I don't have a website in front of me directly, but if okay. you use Google or Start Page or one of those services, just type in three percent Idaho, you're likely going to find them. Okay, thank you for your time. Sure, I thank you very much. They had, of course, a, a rally, as we mentioned off the top of the show today, uh, a rally and a demonstration here in Twin Falls yesterday in opposition. And, of course, you didn't see a lot of political people there. Uh, we wouldn't want to be spotted around those people. We'd be happy, though, to uh, to go out and meet with all sorts of potential terrorists, but regular Americans, hardworking Americans, sorry, we can't do that. What they don't realize, and I think it's not just your national political leadership, but I think a lot of your local politi- political leadership – just has not been able to quite comprehend, or they just think it's going to go away. The the seething resentment that a great many Americans on both the left and right have when it comes to the political, well, status quo. It's 945. Bill Colley with you. Michael Goodwin writing at the New York Post. Here's the good news. The chaos and upheaval we see all around us have historical precedents, and yet America survived. The bad news, everything likely will get worse before it gets better again. That's my chief takeaway, he writes, from a book called Shattered Consensus. And it's an analysis of the growing disorder. Author James Pearson persuasively makes the case there is an inevitable revolution coming because our politics, culture, education, economies, and even philanthropy are so polarized that the country can no longer resolve its differences. First came the era that stretched from 1800 until slavery and sectionalism led to civil war. The second consensus, which he calls the capitalist industrial era, lasted until the Great Depression. It is the third consensus, which grew out of the Depression and World War II, which is now shattering because the nation is unable to solve economic stagnation, political dysfunction. They got drugs for that, don't they? And the resulting public discontent. Pearson thinks that consensus, quote, cannot be resurrected, unquote. Now, the good news is, I think, too, as well, extra good news, The first revolution in this country was somewhat bloody. That was against the British. The second, the Civil War, was quite bloody too. Uh, But what happened during the Depression and the changes that were made there, uh, that was a a non-bloody revolution for the most part. And so perhaps the next one, you know, will be the same way. Perhaps we've we've crossed that line long ago and aren't going back to the the bloodshed of the past. Jay Cost, who is a great writer, has a piece that I found in the, it's called the Saturday Essay in the Wall Street Journal, and he's essentially saying exactly the same thing. 
He says the Republican Party has become so effective at drawing district lines that only conservative reactionaries can win. But he says since 2005, according to Gallup, Americans have overwhelmingly thought that the country has been headed in the wrong direction. Maybe they're not extremists. Maybe they're not extremists. Gallup also finds a notable slide in public approval of our major institutions. Over the last 15 years, the favorable rating of Congress has declined by 18 points, the presidency by 16, the Supreme Court by 17. Business and banks have done no better, dropping by 9 and 15 points, respectively. Then he has a chart about U.S. economic growth, abysmal over the last 15 years. Absolutely abysmal. You wonder why people are teed off? There you go, and nobody seems to have an answer. It's the same get-along, go-along crowd, that coalition that was built after World War II. And the reason they stayed in power so long was because the economy boomed, my friends, and it simply boomed because after World War II, everybody else was picking up the rubble, and the United States wasn't. And when that all came to an end, and the, the world equalized, and other people started you know, eating our lunch, your politicians in Washington, the Boehners and McConnells, they don't have any solution. They have, oh, let's go do what we always do. Give in. In 1964, the American National Election Study found an impressive 77% of Americans trust in government. That number is now 22%. Can you imagine that? So what are people in politics doing about all of this? Well, let's make sure we don't get any more tea partiers in here. Let's make sure we badmouth them and get our media friends to go along with us. Now let's make sure we get rid of them for good. Well, you know what? If the public is that teed off, the people who actually may get pushed out the door, and we're starting to see that happen in Washington, and perhaps we'll see more of that in places like Idaho as well, those people haven't caught on yet, have they? A little bit of the, uh, what do you call, a, a, a rather steep learning curve for a great many of these people. The country was closely divided, Mr. Cost writes, between the two parties and shared a broad consensus on general principles and for good reason. The policies in that post-war era produced fantastic economic growth, but the picture has darkened since the start of the new millennium. Therefore, Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders, great many people like that, and frankly, for the rest of those people in the political class who have not caught on yet, you better think about retiring, because it may not happen in this election cycle but by the end of this decade, I think a great many of you then will be forced into retirement at the ballot box. And let's hope it stays there at the ballot box. Hey, Mike Gallagher coming up. I'll tell you who that's brought to you by in just a moment.